The sample is added to the lateral flow device. Liquid drawn up the device picks up the color-labeled antibody striped onto the reagent pad. Target allergens contained in the sample bind to the color-labeled antibody. Together, these bind to the antibody on the test line, forming antibody target allergen antibody sandwich. Excess color-labeled antibody binds to the target allergen striped onto the device's overload line. Additional color-labeled antibody binds to the anti-species antibody on the control line. This control reaction occurs regardless of the presence or absence of target allergen to assure the user that the test is working correctly. So, in the case of a positive result, you will see three lines form. Any development, regardless of intensity, is considered a line. Liquid drawn up the device picks up the color-labeled antibody from the reagent pad. As with a positive result, the target allergen present in the sample binds to the color-labeled antibody. However, due to the high quantity of target allergen, it also binds to the antibody in the test line before the color-labeled antibody-target allergen combo reaches it. Furthermore, the combo is unable to bind to the target allergen striped to the overload line and passes it by, thus not completing the sandwich and leaving only the color labeled antibody to bind to the anti-species antibody striped to the control line. The result of all this, the test line may or may not be visible, the control line will be, and the overload line will not be. This signifies a grossly contaminated positive. Liquid drawn up the device picks up the color-labeled antibody from the reagent pad. If the sample doesn't contain the target allergen, there is nothing for the color-labeled antibody to bind to until it reaches the target allergen striped to the device's overload line. And after that, the anti-species antibody striped to the control line. That's why, in the case of a negative result, you will only see the control and overload lines develop.